Let's look at defense against infectious disease. One of my favorite topics to talk about because I am a carrier of multiple different diseases. So if we're going to talk about the primary defense system, obviously the next level would be the secondary defense system, which which becomes a lot more specific. The primary defense system uh, can be described as follows. So some vocabulary you need to know. First of all, uh, the thing that can cause an actual disease, the organism or virus. Remember, viruses are not considered living organisms because they're not made up of cells. So that's why you have to say organism slash virus that causes the disease. That's called the pathogen, and、uh, you end up with. And the pathogen is going to try to make you sick by getting into your body somehow. Remember, though, these things, most of these bacterial cells are just living organisms, on the same path as us. They're trying to survive, and so they've evolved mechanisms to help them be able to survive and reproduce, basically. So here are some ways that they're going to try to get into your body, and what we can do to try to stop them. So our first layers, and you can see in a second why they're called primary defense, because they're pretty much just trying to block out any bad guys from entering the body. And so the skin is one such layer. It's tough. There's、uh, some glands that secrete some lactic acid that lower the pH and therefore try to prevent、uh, bacterial growth. Fatty acids as well too, also trying to lower the pH. The average skin. pH is something like pH five, and actually a lot of the hand creams that you buy, or the face creams, and I use a lot of face creams to keep my complexion young and beautiful.、Uh, those face creams are pH balanced to match the pH of our skin. Anyways, little side beauty tips. Mucous membranes are another additional layer that can provide some protection, and they contain lysosomes, which are basically membrane. Bound organelles that contain enzymes in there that are good at digesting、uh, bacterial cell walls. So a lot of places like in your eyes, in the trachea,、um, in the soft mucous membranes located in other parts of the body, in the reproductive organs as well too, are going to contain some of these lysosomes to actually help destroy extra bacteria. I love this word. Mucus is great. <coughs> There's some mucus in my throat right now. The mucus catches the pathogens, and the cilia. You can see some cilia here. They're aligning the trachea. They'll actually beat and help to bring this out of the lungs, so it's not clogging up our lungs and brings it up to our throat. Most of us just swallow it without thinking about it, or some of us will go that extra step, which is kind of gross, and spit it out of the body. But then it's going to cause, you know. All kinds of other、uh, social stigmas being attached, so that's why we don't normally do that.、Uh, phagocytes, lymphocytes are different types of white blood cells, so WBCs. And later, you're going to see that there's many different categories of white blood cells.、Uh, at this level, you need to know a few of them. Phagocytes and lymphocytes. We're going to talk about phagocytes now. Lymphocytes. We'll talk about in the secondary line of defense a little bit later. Here's a general diagram that shows how phagocytes are actually working.、Uh, <clears throat> phagocytes taken things by phagocytosis. It's just a fancy way to say a specific type of endocytosis, which you should be familiar with, where the plasma membrane of this particular white blood cell, called a phagocyte, phage meaning to eat, actually. And you can see here's a little bacteria cell gets actually taken in through the invagination of the membrane here by endocytosis. And while it's in there, it's actually going to fuse with additional lysosomes that could be inside this cell, and they will fuse. The membranes will fuse, releasing the contents of these lysosomes, which are little enzymes, which will be good、uh, for digesting the. Bacterial cell walls that contain a carbohydrate called peptoglycan, but you don't need to peptidoglycan. I don't think you need to know that right now, but、um, it actually will help to digest the bacteria there. So here you can see the lysosomal enzymes are going to be in there, and again, this is called non-specific immunity. This is just targeting any kind of thing that's、uh, penetrating the body that could potentially cause problems. And so once again, primary line of defense, non-specific immunity. It doesn't distinguish between actual. Pathogens, which for the most part could be bacteria, but、uh, in one of the other videos, I give an overview of all the different types of pathogens that can be in your body, including animals, like my favorite tapeworm that's living inside my intestines. Now we'll take a look at the next line of defense called the secondary line of defense, and this gives rise to more specific <clears throat> immunity. And the white blood cells that are involved here are called 
lymphocytes. So, so far we've been introduced to two groups of white blood cells, the phagocytes and the lymphocytes. Lymphocytes make something called antibodies, and people get confused between the word antibodies and antibiotics, which are drugs that humans have manufactured. Um, actually, it, it gets even more confusing because these antibiotics have been largely uh, extracted from other living organisms, including bacteria themselves, in order to kill other types of bacteria. So don't get confused. This word is antibodies. We're only talking about antibodies now. Antibiotics, although they're also discussed in the disease unit, you're going to find out about a little bit later. So right now we're talking about specific immunity that arises from the secondary line of defense. So I'm just going to write a secondary line of defense here and antibody production made by these specific little white blood cells called lymphocytes. Now, each type of lymphocyte only makes one type of antibody, but of all the pathogens that get into our body, be it you know this type of bacteria or that type of bacteria or this virus or that type of virus, every single one of those is different and unique, and one type of lymphocyte can't attack them all. So uh, let's take a look at little, a little diagram here. Okay, if you take a look at this diagram, here is one specific pathogen. So let's, here's a bacterial cell right here. I'm going to outline this light, this guy, this little green guy. And you can see on the cell wall of this thing, now this is exaggerated to show you the actual principles here, but on the cell wall surface of this bacterial cell, there are little protein markers. And these protein markers are actually called antigens. Antigens are foreign substances that trigger a immune response or an antibody response. So every living organism that could possibly invade our body has markers on the surface that help to identify them and our body tries to recognize these things. So it's kind of a antigen versus antibody battle going on. The antigens are the foreign substances for now and the antibodies are things that our uh, lymphocytes, our blood cells are actually, are actually producing. Now, because each lymphocyte is specific, we have to have millions of different types of lymphocytes, each one making a specific type of antibody. And so it's kind of like you have this war going on where you have like 15,000 different types of soldiers, and then one enemy shows up, and that enemy can only be fought off by one specific type of soldier. So those other 14,999 soldiers are not useful in this situation. And the one lucky lymphocyte, the one lucky soldier that produces the correct actual type of antibody, which is this purple one here, this antibody can actually attach to, here's a close-up version, attach to the antigen, and then once that happens, well, that lucky lymphocyte, which is this guy right here, which is producing the correct actual antibodies, goes through this process and divides like crazy, and all of a sudden, it's like we've cloned the one soldier that is able to fight this fight and instantly in the factory behind with some crazy genetic engineering stuff, this one actual soldier becomes uh, multiplied and is now ready to take on all the other bacteria. Because chances are, if we've encountered one bacterial cell that is matching with this particular antibody made by this particular lymphocyte right here, um, there's probably going to be more where it actually came from. So here is quick notes to look at. So the antibodies on the surface of the cell membrane bind to the antigen of the pathogen. This is the shortest possible way to write this. Antibodies on the surface of the cell membrane, these were produced by the actual lymphocyte themselves, bind to the antigen of the pathogen. This lymphocyte that produced that antibody becomes activated it starts undergoing mitosis, which means lots of cell division, to produce plasma cells, which are larger versions of these lymphocytes, these activated lymphocytes that are producing lots of antibodies. And the binding of the antigen and the antibody leads eventually to the destruction of a bunch of these guys. So that mechanism, if you can think of it like all these antibodies are attached and it basically lights up a big target on the backs of these particular bacterial cells and says, hey, we found them, other cells, other phagocytes. Now it's easier for you to identify them. Now come in and help me break these guys down. And so the binding of the antibodies produced by our white blood cells, the lymphocytes, to the antigens of the pathogens that have invaded our body uh, helps to set up a marker so that those cells can be targeted and destroyed by other uh, the brute force type white blood cells that are going on there.